pops here. Got me on a Saturday afternoon. I'm smoking my brown door and poker. On the bottom of it, it says 2014. So, he made this dude a long time ago. Well, not too long ago. He's got some age on it. He's had it sitting around a while. He's been sitting around too long. Old Pop's gonna chooch on this doodle. I like this little dude. I'd like to thank Harriet and Hugh. And Brian. Anyway, old Jilly Darling told me that it looked like a grandpa pipe. Maybe. Maybe so. But it reminded me. I sat in there and chief done it last night till late, late at night. Sat there watching old cowboy movies and chooching on this pipe. I must have Smoked three or four different kinds of tobacco in it. Everybody else fell asleep. The whole house was quiet, except for old Pop. Sitting there watching cowboy movies and chooching on a pipe, drinking me a little rye. But, Grandpa Pipe. Heck, I like this little pipe. It's a great smoker. Wonderful. Wonderful little smoker. But, like I said, it got me thinking about my days as a kid when I would uh, spend the nights with my grandpa. And uh, that's what we used to do. We'd sit up, they had a, a couch that folded out as in a double, double size twin, not twin, but full size bed, and we'd uh, lay on that in the den. And uh, we we'd watch late night cowboy movies. He's the biggest cowboy movie fan alive. Of course, he's dead now, but back then he was. Turned me into the biggest cowboy movie fan alive nowadays. It's either me or the Briar dude, one or the other. Can't exactly tell you which one. And if there's a third, it'd be Jilly, darling. But there's a bunch of old cowboy movie stars. It's from Clarksville, Tennessee. Bunch of old actors that's from Clarksville, Tennessee. My granddaddy was from Nashville. Was born in Davidson County. And he had a bunch of friends that was from Clarksville. A bunch of them that he knew that ended up being famous cowboy actors. He actually knew some of these people. I, I, that may be where he wound up with such an affinity for it or for cowboy movies. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe he just had a natural affinity for it. I know that he liked uh, Henry... Um, I well, can't, can't call his name right now, but played Monolito Montoya on High Chaparral, and he liked John Wayne, and he liked John Russell that uh, played in the Lawman series and a lot of good cowboy movies. But uh, 
from Clarksville. They had uh, Frank Sutton that played uh, Sergeant Carter on Gomer Pyle was from Clarksville, and he played in a lot of old cowboy movies. And uh, George Kemus played in a lot of old cowboy movies was from Clarksville, Tennessee. And uh, I think my granddaddy was acquainted with them. Mm -hmm. As a boy. And uh, anyway, it, it, and her calling this a grandpa pipe got me thinking about my own grandson and the last time I, or one of my grandsons and the last time I saw him we sat here in this office and watched a bunch of old cowboy movies. And one of the ones that we watched is my favorite movie of all times. The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. Well, John Wayne, Jim Stewart, and Lee Marvin. It's got uh, one of the greatest pipe smokers of, in history. Had, one of the world's greatest collection of meerschaums, Mr. Lee Van Cleef. Um, he's a fine, fine actor. Played in a lot of spaghetti westerns, a lot of B-grade westerns, but uh, was a fine, fine western actor. Played uh, in uh, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. He played a sidekick of Liberty Valance. along with uh, Struther Martin. But as I was saying, it reminded me of uh, last time my grandson spent the night over here. His, his uh, mother and father, my daughter and her husband, were on their way to uh, Missouri from Virginia to a funeral. And uh, they stopped through here and let him stay three or four nights while they went on to uh, this funeral in Missouri. And it was, uh, it was such a blessing just to get to spend a, a little bit of time with, uh, with him while they went on to this funeral. He's a, uh, it's neither here nor there, but he's, he's a little autistic fellow and he's got it's a, I know it's a it's a special problem, but he's a special little kid, and he uh, wonderful little fellow. I remember he uh, it was around the time when Hagen was born, and uh, I remember him telling his uh, his mother that uh, Grandpa knew uh, Grandpa knew. The, the, all the puppies looked alike. They were different colors, but they all looked alike to him. But he said Grandpa knew if they were boys or girls. He said Grandpa just turned them over and read it off the bottom. And his mama asked him over the phone, he said, what do you mean, read it off the bottom? He said, it must be written on the bottom because Grandpa just turned them over and looked. And I had a a wedding to preach or to officiate at, uh, I didn't preach this wedding, they wanted a, a civil wedding, so I just officiated. And uh, I remember sitting there on in one of the front pews at this little chapel they had rented, and he went with me. And he asked me, he said, why is the bride wearing white? And I told him, I said, because it's, uh, it's the happiest day of her life and white is a happy color. And this was, you know, it uh, represents happy. White represents happy. And this is the happiest day of her life. He sat there and thought it over for a few minutes. And he looked up at me and he said, well, oh, Pops, why is the groom wearing black? <laughs> I told him, I said, go back here and ask Grandma. <laughs> so, 
He jumped up and he went back there and he asked Grandma and he gave me an excuse to get up and go up to the front and evade that one. I remember it was uh, close to around the time my birthday was and he asked me, he said, uh, he asked me how old I was going to be and I told him I was going to be turning 60. His eyes got big. And he said, did you start with one? All I could think of was, Lord, no, boy, what are you talking about? It's been medically proven that celebrating too many birthdays is hazardous for your health, son. No, I didn't start with one. I jumped ahead a few. That made him feel a little better about old Pops. I miss them grandbabies. Anyway. I like his pipe. I heard a river rat talking about his grandbabies and it made me think about mine. Anyway, reason I called you here, well I didn't call you here, I just put out a new video and y'all came here to look at it. You didn't have to come here but I'm glad you did. I went to the mailbox earlier, it's about as far as my old knee let me walk today but I I went to the mailbox and got the rest of the mail because this much of it was sitting on the front porch and the dogs was going ape shit. But you can hear, that's the packing in it because I've already opened it. See, watch, boink. came to me from our dear brother of the YPC, our friend of the Briar, or brother of the Briar, friend of the YPC, Louisiana Blackwater Fly Fishing. He uh, saw us uh, do a video the other day, and we was talking about several different tobaccos, and he heard me mention something, and he said, got to get my hands on that. He contacted me, and he offered me something, and I said, yeah, that'll work. So... He sent me, and I looked them up, and you can see I've uh, made some extra notes on the bags after researching them, so you can, you can see I've already uh, had the box open, and I made some extra little notes on the bags here, so because I, I always catalog all my tobacco anyway, so you see the extra little notes there, but he sent me some um, consummate gentleman made of Burley Latakia from Maryland and Virginia. Nice little English blend. We're going to see how that goes over. He also sent me some STG Balkan Sassini. Good little hefty samples. And in uh, exchange for that, I sent him a uh, 
a little piece of that um, velvet, that old tin of velvet, just a little sample to try. And I sent him a taste of some uh, some OTCs that uh, in his area are just really hard to get. I sent him some half and half and some Paladin Black Cherry and some uh, uh, Sir Walter Raleigh Red Pack and uh, several other Burley blends that, uh, well, I'm sure he'll do a video on it and let y'all know what all I sent, but I sent him four or five Burleys. But that ain't the topper. Here's the topper. And he didn't have to do this. We didn't agree on this. Can y'all see that? Is that not just the neatest thing? A five space spike rack. That's just the nicest thing. That's just really nice. I'll cherish that. I know it's handmade. There ain't no sticker on the bottom of it. You can see the glue marks on the bottom of it and where he sanded it, and you can see the finish that he's put on it. And I, I, you can look at it and tell that it's handmade. But that's just as nice as it can be, man. I will cherish that. Well, for as long as it lasts, and I don't see it not lasting until I die anyway. And then... I mean, I got one sitting back there on my shelf that I keep... What I call a cellar. It ain't no cellar, it's a shelf. But I got one back there that I made that... Uh, I made it... Um, Made it out of a, a piece of, it's it's a piece of oak, but it's, uh, it's stained to look like walnut. But man, Terry, I don't know how to thank you. I truly do hope you enjoy that velvet. I mean, I did, and and I know you will. But buddy, we didn't. Uh, we didn't agree to this, and this is special. This is truly special to me. This is really nice. It's really nice. Louisiana blackwater fly fishing. If y'all haven't subbed that guy, go sub him check him out he's a heck of a fisherman heck of a member of the YTPC y'all go sub that fellow anyway I'm old pops <laughs>